Sosuke Aizen was perhaps the pinnacle of nigh-unreachable power throughout the Rankar arc. On his quest to transcend beyond the veil of Shinigami and Hollow, Aizen fuses with the Hogyoku in an attempt to gain even greater power. And of course, he succeeds, rising to a higher plane of existence in the process. Though he's eventually eclipsed by Ichigo, a natural-born hybrid, and brought crashing back down to Earth in both a literal and a figurative sense, Aizen remains one of Bleach's most incredibly strong characters, even long after his defeat. However, the end of his battle, and subsequently the Deicide sub-arc as a whole, brings up a lot of questions surrounding Aizen's future as a power player in the Bleach universe. And when the Thousand Year Blood War arc rolls around and the cast balloons to include a slew of exceptionally powerful beings duking it out at the end of the world as we know it, is there still room at the table for the former main villain of Bleach? In this video, we'll take a look at Aizen as he appears in the final arc of Bleach, the small but decisive role he has in the Quincy Blood War, and just how powerful he's actually become during his stint in Muken. Aizen always wanted to become a god, seeing himself as a superior being ruling over all others, one that those beneath should look up to for guidance and leadership. But in the Thousand Year Blood War arc, he may come face to face with and learn the hard way that there are some characters that will now go even beyond that and come closest to the truly divine that we've ever seen in Bleach. Before we get started on the video, guys, if you haven't hit subscribe yet, make sure to do that now for more Bleach videos just like this one every single week. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up as well to help support me and the channel. And if you want to take that support for me another step further, I do have a Patreon as well. And as always, I just want to say a massive thank you and give a huge shout out to everyone who is supporting me over there on Patreon. I really do appreciate it. But if you wanted to support me in an even easier way, go and check out my second channel, Mr. Tomo Talks Games. Again, if you want to drop a subscribe over there, that would be immensely helpful. And again, I would be super grateful. But no matter how you choose to support me, just know that it really does mean the world to me. And thank you all so very much. And of course, before we dive into this video, there will be spoilers for the Thousand Year Blood War arc of Bleach to come. So let's begin by looking at Aizen and his fate as it appears at the end of the Arankar arc, as I think this helps to inform where he is in regards to his power and strength by the time we do eventually see him in the Thousand Year Blood War arc. Upon slamming into the ground after being struck by Ichigo's Mugetsu, Aizen manages to survive, regenerate, and rises again, watching with glee as his Zanpakuto begins to crumble into dust. Here, Aizen claims that the Hogyoku has decided he no longer requires a Zanpakuto, and instead, its very powers and abilities are now fusing with him, much in the same way that Ichigo achieved, supposedly, theoretically, the final stage of their evolution. While this seems pretty concrete and lines up with how Aizen would later appear in the Thousand Year Blood War arc, I've always found this particular scene difficult to reconcile, and the outcome of Aizen's next appearance doesn't seem to line up with the themes on display here in Deicide. Though he claims the Hogyoku believes he doesn't need a Zanpakuto anymore, I've always found this to be dubious, and just another of Aizen's many escalating delusions that he's suffering from at this point in the story. The entire point of Aizen's fall from grace here is that he can't really comprehend what's going on, what's actually happening before his eyes. Ichigo even says as much to him that he's scared because for once in his life he can't understand what's actually taking place in front of him. Even if he thinks he has all the answers like he normally does and has had up until now, Kubo makes it clear that he's disproving Aizen with every step of the battle. Whether it's Aizen's insane belief, his insane rationalization that the only way Ichigo is able to grab him and fling him as far as he did was because he somehow traded 
all of his Reiatsu for raw physical strength, or the belief that Ichigo could never possibly surpass him and his denial right down to the very last second. I always saw Kyoka Suigetsu's disintegration as a sign that Aizen himself has forsaken his Zan Park To as his true partner, instead choosing the Hogyoku and the power it has so far given him. But it, much like the Hogyoku would do a few minutes later, has chosen in response to abandon him. If Kubo has made a point of shutting down Aizen's beliefs at every step of the way so far in Deicide, why would he suddenly stop now? Why would Aizen now all of a sudden be right about this one thing and wrong about literally everything else, including what's about to happen in just a few moments? But like I said, it seems irrefutable. A Thousand Year Blood War arc seems to completely affirm that he did indeed fuse with his Zanpak toe after all. But I guess it's possible that in the years he spent in isolation deep within Muken, he reforged his bond with his Zanpak toe over time and subsequently became even more powerful as a result. Anyway, we see Aizen's Hogyoku acquired power disappear, or at least several layers of it anyway. The power that Aizen had been gaining and building throughout Deicide as a result of his fusion with the Hogyoku and his ascension completely shatters, peeling away from him like dead skin, revealing nothing but the man underneath. As soon as the Hogyoku no longer recognises Aizen as its master, when at some point deep within his subconscious he realised he no longer wanted or needed that power, Aizen seemingly lost it all. The imagery seems fairly clear-cut here, that Aizen is in the process of losing absolutely everything as a result of his transgressions. But what does this actually mean for his character and his abilities? Kubo appears to have essentially hit the reset button on his villain. Just as Aizen was spiralling out of control with an increasingly eldritch and monstrous appearance to match, Kubo slams on the brakes, stripping Aizen of everything and dragging him back to our level but also superficially returning him to the Aizen we all knew and loved. It seems likely to me, at least, that Aizen has lost everything he gained in his subsequent transformations, as evidenced by his return to his Shinigami appearance. That being said, as noted by the Central 46 during his trial, with the Hogyoku still embedded within him, Aizen retains his immortality and his colossal Reiatsu, a well of monstrous Reiatsu so deep that Yuhabark himself even noted it as the reason for Aizen being a special war potential. Aizen always had enormous Reiatsu, even compared with his captain contemporaries, so for this to be amplified amplified immeasurably as a result of his Hogyoku ascension and be the main holdover from his transformations makes absolute sense. And so he's restrained and imprisoned deep within Muken for the next 20,000 years. And so we move ahead to the Thousand Year Blood War arc. By the time then we next see Aizen, it's been just over approximately two years. Living out his days in the pitch black darkness of his prison, alone with his thoughts, has presumably given Aizen plenty of time to reflect, to reacquaint himself with Kyoka Suigetsu. We know he's successfully fused with his blade after all, and he seems able to project his complete hypnosis without any access to the Zanpak toe itself. It's strange though, presumably the activation ritual is still required for someone to fall under its spell in the first place, or else Ichigo would now be able to be affected too, he'd now be subjected to its abilities just by being around Aizen. But when Aizen uses his illusions to throw off Yuhabark's perception during the first invasion, he can't have released his Zanpak Toh, at least not in the traditional sense. Regardless, that power of Kanzen Simon is now a part of Aizen himself, perhaps the truest reflection of who he really is as a person. And in that sense, he has achieved the final stage of a Shinigami's evolution after all. But Aizen's next appearance in the source material gives us a much better, clearer look at how powerful he's actually become during his time in prison. 
When Kyoraku visits Aizen in Muken, he's been given the stipulation by Central 46 that he can only unlock three of the many seals that currently bind the former captain. Aizen's mouth, his left eye, and his ankles. Despite only unlocking the mouth seal to begin with, however, Kyoraku is shocked to see Aizen able to walk towards him, emerging from the thick, dark shadow in a very cool image. Even in a prisoner's garb, Aizen towers over those around him. Again, I was never quite sure what this was supposed to be implying. Is Aizen so powerful at this point that the seals holding him in place are barely able to restrain him, and by just undoing one of them, that provides enough leeway for Aizen to then free himself from the rest? Or is the implication that Aizen has always been able to free himself whenever he wants and simply decided to cooperate for the time being? Either way, I think the main takeaway here is that Aizen far surpasses the Soul Society's expectations of where his power should be. Even Kyoraku himself is surprised to see Aizen free of his shackles after only unlocking the one seal. And then, of course, there's the excellent scene where a member of the Kido Corps foolishly attempts to restrain Aizen, only to lose his hands in the process. Simply by getting near to Aizen, the man's hands are burned away. And of course, we've seen this before. When Aizen had transcended, having emerged from his cocoon state, his soul having been broken down while in that cocoon and restructured, and then upon his re-emergence he had this new level of power, his Ryatsu was so palpable that he could destroy beings beneath him simply by being near them. Merely walking past a regular human was enough to annihilate their body, and a bottle thrown at him turned to dust before even coming close to making contact. Interestingly, for Aizen to injure more powerful beings, it seems like there was at least some intent required. For example, Gein was able to remain close to Aizen even in this form without injury, even going so far as to place a hand on his chest. However, when Aizen actively attempted to lash out and grab Gein's arm, he carved out a chunk of his flesh effortlessly, simply by basically brushing his forearm with his fingertips much in the same way as he had been disintegrating people up until now. So, what does this tell us about where Aizen's Reiatsu is at currently? Well, this Kido Core soldier obviously has more Reiatsu than a regular human, than your average Karakura Town resident, and less than Gein, and yet he's burned up like the human was simply by getting close. Not only that, but Aizen comments that the black suit he's currently wearing doesn't eliminate his Reiatsu entirely, merely it serves to keep it close to him at all times. And I wonder about that. Does that mean that if Aizen wasn't wearing the suit in the state he's currently in, everyone in that room, save maybe Kyoraku, would be turned to dust immediately? Is that how absurd his Reiatsu currently is, that if he's just wandering around without it restrained, it's just going to be destroying everything around him? Or is the effect of his Reiatsu amplified because it's so tightly condensed around him currently due to the suit, creating essentially a tightly knit force field? It makes me wonder how Aizen could ever live a normal life again if everything he interacts with that isn't purpose-built to deal with him would just be obliterated. Same goes for how they got the suit on him in the first place. The only conceivable way I could see around that conundrum is that his Reiatsu has only reached this level during his imprisonment. Regardless, Aizen's Reiatsu is at the very least as potent as it was during Deicide, if not more powerful altogether. This is reinforced, of course, when Aizen comes to the aid of the Gotei 13 during their hour of need. As Yuhabak absorbs the power of the Soul King in the palace above, he's only able to contain some of it. The Soul King's Reiatsu is overflowing and immense, probably, I would argue, without a doubt, the greatest we've ever seen in the source material. The surplus of power spills out of Yuhabak, taking the form of an entire army's worth of strange monsters before raining down upon the Seireite and the Shinigami within. The Soul King's power is conceptual and weird, but Kubo does a good job of showing just how overwhelming it actually is. 
The entire combined might of Byakia, Renji, Rukia, Soifon, Omaida, Hisagi, Ikaku, and Yumachika can't even make a dent in it. It's like an endless sea, a torrent of power that threatens to devour the entirety of the Gote's remaining forces. Except when Aizen arrives, he's able to quickly put a stop to this circus with his raw power alone. Even strapped to his chair, even with his prisoner's outfit presumably suppressing some of his Reiatsu, Aizen's power obliterates many of the monsters, creating a clearing within the darkness. This particular shot is a great insight into what Aizen is able to achieve. Look at the curtain, the drape of pure blackness encroaching on everyone and everything. It is suffocatingly thick and opaque. That is what threatened to swallow up the Soul Society, yet for once, ironically, Aizen has proven to be a literal light within the dark. Aizen attempts to play himself down, telling Kyoraku that he won't be able to get rid of all of the monsters while trapped to his chair, but Kyoraku suspects otherwise. Immortal or not, Aizen's body will be devoured all the same if he doesn't act quickly. Deciding to be rid of the Soul King's power once and for all, Aizen unleashes an incantationless Hado 90 Kuro Hitsugi, a perfect black coffin, building on its appearances in both the Soul Society and Aranka arcs. And with it, the titanic Kido spell lifts into the sky, destroying all of the overflow of the Soul King's power in one fell blast. This is a fantastic showcase for how monstrous Aizen has become, how he is now on a totally different plane to the rest of the Shinigami around him. The Soul King clearly houses a power greater than anyone in the Bleach universe could realistically hope to muster. He is the closest analogy to God in that universe after all, and even after his death and dismemberment, he still retains a strength that's nearly impossible to quantify that's so great, Kubo has to depict it with an army of its own. The fact that Aizen was able to wipe out that army when the warriors of the Gote 13 looked so helpless in the face of it shows just how far above them he really is. Admittedly, this is nothing new, as Aizen wiped out the entire Gote 13 on his own during the fake Karakura Town battle. But here, even restrained and unable to move, he achieved what they could not with a spell alone. The power of Aizen's Kurohitsugi is so immense that Kyoraku feared for the lives of everyone in the vicinity, commanding them all to get back into the lab and beneath the spell's range the instant he realised what was going to happen. And of course, when they resurfaced, they realised the Kido had not only destroyed the Soul King's power, but utterly vaporised even the very debris of the buildings around them. And all of this with no lengthy incantation, something he required even when close to the apex of his transformations before. That's a very smart way of telling the reader just how strong Aizen has become during his time in isolation, and by doing away with the excesses of his Hogyoku forms, and instead doubling down on his natural Shinigami abilities, Kubo shows us that Aizen is refocused on what power really is. We get one crucial line from the person who perhaps understands Aizen's current position best of all, Kisuke Urahara, who notes that Aizen may have in fact become more powerful than he was when he fought Ichigo. Considering Kisuke gleans that observation from Aizen using an incantation list Kido, it seems likely to me at least that he's comparing the fact that Aizen had to use an incantation when fighting Ichigo to this moment in the present. But in what seems like a blatant demonstration of his new immeasurable power, Aizen prepares to blast the royal palace out of the sky. It's reckless, sure, but he's confident, and summons a spiralling torrent, a whirlwind of power that looks ready to pierce the very heavens themselves. This idea of him blowing the palace to smithereens seems to be Kubo's own way of saying that Aizen himself now trespasses on the realm of the divine, even if he's not physically there, while also feeling like an analogy, a direct reference to Aizen's desire to upend the ruling class. Even so, that massive power is able to be contained. 
Much to Aizen's surprise, his suit restricts his power once more, snapping it back close to him and wiping out his typhoon of Ryatsu, snuffing it out completely. While he and Mayuri then prepare to square off in a bout to determine which is stronger, Aizen's raw Ryatsu or Mayuri's technological prowess, we unfortunately never get to see the outcome. Interestingly, when the time comes for the final battle, Aizen faces off against Yuhabak, who is currently infused with the strength of the Soul King, and now the closest thing to an actual god in Bleach since the passing of his father. Aizen's own Kurohitsugi, which was capable of obliterating a vast chunk of the Soul King's power, wasn't enough, even at point-blank range, to destroy his chair. Yet a seemingly casual blast of energy from Yuhabak in his current state did the job just fine. It's also interesting to note that Aizen's blade returns in this fight, but it's difficult to ascertain whether or not he truly has one at all. While I still want to do a deep dive into the final battle at some point in the future, Kyokusui Getsu itself only seems to appear when Aizen himself is likely an illusion, conjured up to deceive Yuhabak, and thus is possibly a clue on Kubo's part as to when the real Aizen himself is actually present. Either that, or Aizen has the power now to materialise a blade whenever he likes. While Aizen is clearly depicted as being outmatched by Yuhabak, both physically and in terms of raw power, there are some interesting points to be made here. Firstly, it's a testament to Aizen's Reatsu once again, that his Kyokusui Getsu is still capable of affecting Yuhabak and his Almighty, when all other abilities seem to pale in comparison to him, now that he has fully absorbed the Soul King. It's also interesting to think this might be a slightly more experimental version of complete hypnosis than before. By saying the line to you, Harbark, I see, so you see me as Ichigo Kurosaki, do you? Fascinating. Aizen seems to confirm that in this state, he currently has no real control over what illusions his opponent is actually subjected to, or at the very least, he was absolutely not confident that his power would work on Yuha Bark whatsoever, and this feels like another avenue Aizen could yet still refine his abilities in. So, to summarise, I'd say things really couldn't have turned out much better for Sosuke Aizen. After his defeat against Ichigo, he was stripped of the superfluous elements of his newfound power. His transformations and some of the abilities that came with them, perhaps most notably his ability to actually teleport instead of using Shunpo to get around. But he retained the core of his powers complete hypnosis, and incredible untapped Reiatsu. During his time in isolation, he's only refined these powers further, being able to now create illusions without the use of his blade, and gaining such unbelievable Reiatsu as to be able to casually destroy the bodies of at least somewhat talented Shinigami, even when his power is being restricted, and use that same strength to repel the Soul King's onslaught. In this sense, Aizen finally gets to challenge the Soul King himself, even if it's not how he imagined it. By undoing his Hogyoku-led transformations, Kubo resets Aizen back to a more palatable state, all the while improving his core powers and abilities in every way, and making him considerably more powerful than he already was. In this sense, is it accurate to say that Aizen is no longer a hybrid being? Everything about him that was hollow-like seems to have been stripped away after his defeat to Ichigo. Instead, he's refocused and doubled down on becoming the ultimate Shinigami, even going so far as to surpass that notion and continue to break boundaries, especially where his Reiatsu is concerned. Aizen has gone from challenging the Gotei 13 themselves to challenging the god that the Gote 13 were almost overcome by. But that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. It's pretty clear cut that Aizen is at the most powerful he has ever been, even if some of his Hogyoku led transformations and powers have been removed from him. It seems instead, during his time in isolation, he has chosen to double down on those core, intrinsically Shinigami powers and abilities and reached an entirely new scale, an entirely new plane that very few others could even hope 
to glimpse a fleeting look at. I really hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Let me know in the comments below if you agreed with my thoughts at all regarding how powerful Aizen has actually become and the current state of his character and his powers as of the Thousand Year Blood War arc. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. Do please let me know. Also, make sure to hit subscribe if you haven't done already and give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I really would appreciate it. But until next time, guys, I'll catch you later and I'll see you then.